I had a law school professor say that if two guys who liked each other sat at a bar and had enough to drink, they can solve the world's problem. That's Even absolutely if it's true. an Arnold Palmer masquerading as a that's, beer. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs>
And I didn't know what that meant at the time. And then it occurred to me, they're talking about a school district that was, had not complied with Brown versus Board of Education, a Supreme Court decision that was adopted in 54 and 55, and we in 1990 still fighting their fight. I was shocked. I know that um, Jackson, Mississippi is really important to you. Mm -hmm. um, our organizations, our two organizations work together to address the drinking water crisis there. Uh, we've also worked together on voter registration, which is very important right now. Can you talk about um, you know, those simple acts of humanity, but also about partnerships and the role of the NAACP working with organizations like corporations and others to get things done? So one of the things you know, in law school I, I learned, corporations one of those classes that I really enjoy. A lot of people like hate corporations. And I didn't like to secure transactions, but I like corporations, right? And the two things I took out of that class, many things, is one, that publicly traded companies have one responsibility, return value for shareholders, right? But also, in order to do that, you have to be good corporate partners and community partners. And in that space, it's for me to figure out how can we make sure corporations meet their legal obligations while being a good community partner. Protecting democracy is being a good community partner, but it's also returning value for shareholders. Because without a strong democracy, you get chaos and instability, and no corporations want instability because you cannot predict, you know, value the future. So it's in that nexus, in that place, that I'm always looking at what's the best opportunity for partnership. Because I understand clearly, corporations are not here to give money away to charities. It's here to return value for shareholders. And many of those shareholders are in pension funds and they work every day. They, they pick up trash. They, are, they work for municipal government. They are teachers who put their money into pension funds that invest in companies like T-Mobile, while at the exact same time looked for T-Mobile to ensure that the quality of the product that's being provided is done in a way that's consistent with uh, community values. Those are the type of partnerships. So when you think about uh, infrastructure failure in the city of Jackson around water, T-Mobile stepping up, that's important. When you think about protecting our democracy, and you can only do that if people participate, are registered to vote and go to the polls, that's important. It's not about partisanship, it's about participation to strengthen and grow this democracy so we can have a stable environment for corporate participation. You know, I wanted to talk about the role of companies and employees at companies in this space because, as you know, with your help, three years ago, uh, T-Mobile formed an external diversity advisory council, and you serve on that. Thank you for your leadership and your support. It's all about helping us accelerate our efforts against our ambitious goals in DE&I. And it really raises a question, which is, what's the role of companies in the pursuit of equity in our society? And what's the role of individual employees? What, what impact can we make from the corporate sector? You have to modify expectations on what's possible because if you assume risk, if you understand the reward of, 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 from that assumption of risk, you can really open up markets that, that's not there now. And you don't have to spend billions of dollars. All you have to do is look right what's in your backyard. That's really important for corporations to do. In terms of the workforce, the strength of any company is the diversity of voices and perspectives that you breathe life into so they can add and you can know what's there. The diversity of your workforce will help you move with the time and capture markets and maintain and grow your customer base. Well, we certainly agree with that at T-Mobile. And we have nearly 115 million customers. They come from every walk of life, every economic circumstance, every neighborhood, and it's been important to our company for a long time. What's next for the organization? You know, you've been in office now for several years. What, what are the priorities of the NAACP right now? What do you see right around the corner? Where are you taking things? So, so you know, the base of who we are is, our job is to make democracy worse, or work and make a more equitable society. But we're, we're looking at innovative ways to do it. We are launching a venture capital fund uh, we're in a finalizing fund formation where we're looking at a 100 to $200 million raise to kind of diversify the tech space because VC fund managers who are African Americans, they're having a hard time to raise over 30 or $50 million. So us entering in that space so we can be a fund to fund. Secondly, we've expanded our, our, our Hollywood office uh, because we understand that advocacy is also entertainment. 
how people are seen on the screen is how they're treated in the streets and in public policy. So we have a joint venture, for-profit joint venture with CBS Studios to produce content. We've sold several uh, uh, projects now. I can't wait to some get on television. Hollywood is a unique place, but we, 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 are, we are far along there. We are moving our headquarters to D.C. We're currently headquartered in, in Baltimore. We work with, really hard with the mayor of D.C., so we're part of RFP. We're waiting for them to decide who the developer would be. So 14th and U would be the new home. Yes, Exciting. 14th and U, right? <laughs> we'll be the headquarters for the NAACP. They're going to raise that building and do a new, a new uh, project there. Uh, we, we've taken an equity position in an AI company called Hello Alice, which is a small uh, business platform. And we did that because during COVID, we've seen a lot of African-American businesses suffer. We partnered with Beyonce's uh, uh, foundation, Bay Good, to give out grants. And we learned that this technology could get the information out faster. And so we have over 100,000 person of uh, small business community and Af African-American community also recognizing that the fastest growing business, uh, individuals going into business are African-American females. It has been that way since 2015, so we are working to support that. And just overarching all of that, making sure we continue to push to turn out voters and engage people in target areas. What we are witnessing in a Tennessee or you name the Southern or the state is not democratic. It's exclusionary. And it, it, is, it, will, it will cause us to go backwards as a nation and not forward. My last question for you is how can we each of us be better allies? I'm talking about each of us as individual people. And I ask because I feel, I feel like the T-Mobile viewers and employees and community um, believe deeply in equity and inclusion, inequality, but we don't always know how to be great allies. What, what advice would you give us? So that's a big question, right? Sure question. Wait, one of the things I, I, I'm always, I always try to be clear about, we have to separate between what's partisan and political, and what's to support our democracy. That becomes key because so much have been politicized that if you say X, then you must be a part of this or part of that. When at the end of the day, access for full participation for representative government is absolutely key. It should not be a partisan activity. That if Australia's population can vote 90% of the eligible, 96% of eligible voters in Australia participate, that's representative government. But in this country, if we get around 6%, we say that's a high voter turnout. That's an embarrassment. So we need to like make sure that we have true representative government. Part two, make sure that we learn how to accept and appreciate people's uniqueness and not otherize that as a black male and a white female, we can sit here and respect one another, talk to one another, and really find what are the avenues of commonality that we should be working towards as opposed to look at the things uh, and figure out where we differ. Because if we start there, we can never get anywhere. I had a law school professor say that if two guys who liked each other sat at a bar and had enough to drink, they can solve the world's problem. <laughs> Even Isn't if that true? Yes, absolutely Even if it's true. an Arnold Palmer masquerading as a that's, beer. That's right. That's right. <laughs> because you respect and like one another, you don't have to agree, but the things you agree on, you can accelerate and really figure out how to make the things you agree on solve some of the problems. Because we don't talk. Yeah. How can we ever respect one another? We don't talk. How can ever we get to a point of agreeing? And if we don't talk, how can we accept each other's uniqueness? That's so simple, but at the same time, really powerful. Very, yeah. You guys, Derek Johnson, thank you thank so you. much for being here. You are amazing. Thank you. Wow. You guys, that's it for today's episode of Sidekicks Conversations. I hope you're inspired by this. I sure was. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.